misunderstood personality. It is a natural desire and feeling for humans to want to be understood, and it is the basic reason we look for a soulmate. Someone who needs and wants to understand our bad, good, right, and wrong elements. But people who suffer from personality disorders are often misunderstood, both borderline and psychopathy personality disorders seem to be widely misunderstood than others. The borderline disorder is primarily attached to women, it carries a disgraceful reputation however it is treatable. It is misunderstood because there are over 200 different ways the disorder can present itself, with the nine possible symptoms. The collective symptoms are pervasive, surrounding five areas of dysregulation, behavioral, cognitive, emotional, interpersonal, and self-centeredness. This personality disorder occurs in the context of relationships, resulting in patterns of intense disruption and instability. Feelings such as fear of abandonment, impulsivity, intense mood shifts, and recurrent suicidal behavior. And this dissimilar disorder doesn't stand alone. High rates of co-occurrence exist with disorders, such as bipolar, eating, major depression, and substance abuse. Often one of the other disorders are diagnosed instead and then ignoring or dismissing the disorder. Psychopathic personalities in the media are more memorable than others. But in reality, these are people we don't like or understand, and so we associate them with being psychopathic. Some of the personality traits tend to be emotionally disturbed, showing signs of anxiety and dysphoria. Psychopathy is inheritable and causes by environmental issues. And it isn't a single personality disorder, it is a confluence of several different personality traits reflecting differing levels of boldness, disinhibition, and meanness. A multifaceted condition marked by a blend of personality traits. Studies have shown that adults and youth can show a decrease in criminal behavior and violence after intensive treatment. However, psychopathy cannot be equated with extreme violence or serial killers. Intuitive personality traits are too misunderstood, often they have a variety of interests, and their idea of success is different from others. They act and think differently from family and friends making situations frustrating, and either side struggles to understand them. Usually, this makes the person feel alone and isolated. People with intuitive personalities never accept things at face value, and generally, feel on the edge of society. Because they tend to mistrust authority and overthink things, and then visualize another side of the story. Influential Personality Theories As human beings, each one of us has different personality traits that represent who we are and provides the ability for interaction. Personality is a person's true inner nature, and it reveals the unique impression we make on others. The study of personality involves, the ability to identify with human individuality. However, if you were taught to hide feelings and emotions, you probably won't have much personality. You won't have freely expressed characteristic traits that have manifested over time. Psychologists use personality to refer to the characteristic patterns of actions, feelings, ideas, and thoughts. Consistent and distinctive traits are usually organized into characteristic patterns of behavior. Understanding personality is complex and no single theory can cover the total personality. Certain aspects of major theoretical perspectives provide greater insight such as humanistic, psychoanalytic, social cognitive, and traits. Any theories of personality can provide different answers as to how to utilize the functions properly. Particular functions such as the role of consciousness slash factors of the unconscious, determinism slash the ability to function with freedom, early experience roles, factors of genetic roles, uniqueness slash universality, etc. And all theories can be very influential for arts, films, literature, psychiatry, or psychology. Sigmund Freud discovered that we have limited conscious awareness of the mind, and he compared it to an iceberg. An iceberg is a large piece of ice floating, detaching itself from the original glacier in which it is carried out to sea. He has used free association to help recover forgotten memories of his patients. Freud's theory is the psychoanalytic perspective, it emphasizes the influence of the unconscious. Which pertains to the importance of early childhood experiences on a person, and the aggressive and sexual instincts. The psychological forces operate on three levels of awareness, such as conscious, preconscious, and unconscious. He believed that the human personality emerges, when there is an internalized social conflict of interest between the aggressive or pleasure-impulsive restraints. The personality will arise to resolve a conflict, through emotions such as ego, id, or superego. Ego is considered to be aligned with reality, the conscious rational behavior and thoughts in which it balances a person's demands and needs of the physical world. An ID is considered to be aligned with the imagination, the unconscious irrational behavior and thoughts in which it unbalances a person's demands and needs of the physical world. Superego is considered to be aligned with the internal representation of parental and societal values, and preconscious works as a voice of conscience. It forces the ego to consider both the imaginative as well as reality aspects. It judges bad and good, right, and wrong behavior of oneself. Unbalancing the moral ideas and then bringing about anxiety, guilt, inferiority, and shame upon the person. The ego mediates between the instinctual demands of the ID and superego moral position while balancing tasks. 
only solving problems if a compromising or realistic solution is possible, otherwise, it distorts the perception or thoughts of reality through a process called defense mechanism. When defending or safeguarding ourselves, we use human adjustments known as defense mechanism techniques. Such as denial, displacement, projection rationalization, reaction formation, regression, repression, or sublimation. However, Freud's theories are well known to be controversial. Carl Jung believed that people are motivated by more psychological energy. One psyche comprises the deepest collective unconsciousness. It is a set of influences inherited through genetics and the human race. And he suggested the archetypes are collective unconscious mental images of a particular experience, object, or person. Such as a hero, innocent child, powerful father, and nurturing mother. Karen Horney believed that basic anxiety is similar to a child feeling helpless and isolated in a potentially hostile environment. Alfred Adler believed that the central motive of humans is to strive for superiority. He suggested it arise from experiencing feelings of inferiority during infancy and childhood when the child is dependent and helpless in need of love and support. However, his psychoanalytic idea is well known to be criticized for inadequate evidence to support the theory. Traits are characteristic behavior and conscious motives that describe people, and they represent an enduring and stable predisposition to behaving in a given way. Human behavior is an interaction that indicates an outcome of consistent situations and shows the value of traits. The apparent traits are called surface traits, e.g. cordial and happy. Trait theories of personality are used to make a prediction describing, identifying, and measuring individual differences. Traits do not explain the personality of a person and don't tell us the cause of individual differences. Raymond Cattell developed 16 source traits called personality factors, some are practical imaginative, relaxed tense, reserved outgoing, and serious happy-go-lucky. Isaac's suggestion classifies people into four group types, extroverted neurotic and introverted neurotic, extroverted stable, and introverted stable, with psychotism being another dimension of personality. McRae and Costa developed a model that consists of five factors, agreeableness and conscientiousness, comprising of neuroticism, extroversion, and openness to experience. Albert Bandura developed a social cognitive theory that views the social context and a person's influenced behavior. It is a reciprocal determinism of behavior, cognitive and environmental factors. It suggests that our actions and thoughts originate in a social environment, but is essential for engaging and self-regulating active cognitive processes. The theory incorporates a personalized concept that includes abilities, attitudes, and cognitive skills representing a system. Self-efficacy indicates the person is convinced of the abilities and effectiveness to meet demands in particular situations. The social cognitive theory focuses on the role of memory and thoughts and brings them into manifestation. Based on laboratory research, however, his theory explains the rational without identifying the irrational. Although it isn't necessary to acknowledge irrational, once you are fully focused on rationality. The unconscious will only unbalance actions and thoughts of consistency and stability in very demanding situations. Abraham Maslow's and Carl Rogers' theories explain that there is an active creative force of development and growth within one's expression of self. This perspective is also known as the third force, about human characteristics and potential free will of self-awareness. In general, the consciousness and subjectivism of humanistic perceptions are considered essentially good and important to acknowledge one's own needs. Abraham Maslow suggested human motives are arranged in a hierarchy of needs, that can self-actualize their actions and thoughts. He believed the people that utilize self-actualization effectively are acceptable of others and self, appreciative of life's positive aspects, creative, dependent, spontaneous, have realistic perceptions and enjoy privacy. Maslow's hierarchy optimistic view of the human sense of needs is belonging and love, esteem, physiological, safety, self-actualization, and transcendence. Carl Rogers believed the basic motives of humans is to actualize tendencies, and doing so drives to essentially enhance and maintain the human organism. Rogers' observation suggests that people act by their self-concept for motivation. But the experiences that are contrary to self-concepts they deny or distort. The ideal condition for development is regarded as positive unconditionally. He believed a fully functioning individual is flexible and evolves from self-concepts. The Indian culture has a very different theory of personality, it is called the Samkhya. It is one of the six leading systems of Hindu philosophy, stressing the duality and reality of matter and spirit. The Samkhya has three qualities of Prakrit or nature that refer to Gunas, in Sankhya and Vedantic philosophy, Rajas, Sattva, and Tamas. Bhagavad Gita views the three Gunas in a prototypical order, and at any point in time, one may dominate. The behavior of a person depends on the guna that is dominating the person at any point in time. Bhagavad Gita is a portion of the Mahabharata, having the form of a dialogue between the hero Arjuna and his charioteer, the avatar Krishna, in which a doctrine combining Brahmanical and other elements is evolved. Gunas. Rajas of passion, a person that is dominated by Rajas guna has qualities that include a desire for a sense of dissatisfaction, envious, gratification, materialistic and vigorous. Sattva of goodness or purity, 
a person that is dominated by sattva gunas has qualities that involve balance mentally, cleanliness, controlling, detachment, determination, discipline, duty, gravity, intelligence, and truth. Thomas of dullness or inertia, a person that is dominated by Thomas gunas has qualities that involve anger, arrogance, depression, helplessness, imbalance mentally, laziness, and procrastination. Human Personality Assessing Researchers have developed a variety of tools for assessments, the three category types consist of observational, projective, and self-report. The observational tools need an interview and a rating of the person in one or more situations. In a projective test, ambiguous material is used and the person has to give his or her interpretation, in which the interpretation will be expected to be projected in the person's given response. Although the interpretation and usage of various personality tests are required to be administered by a professional psychologist that has had training. Two of the famous projective tests are the Rorschach ink blot test and thematic apperception test, TAT. During the ink blot test examinee is shown a set of 10 symmetrical ink blots, and then asked to say what he or she can visualize in each of them. Thereafter the responses given are interpreted by the psychologist. In the TAT certain photographs are shown, and the examinee has to develop a story describing the situation concerning its future, past, and present. The story narrated by the examinee is analyzed and coded by the psychologist. Personality Disorder Factors Researchers say there is a mix of factors that cause personality disorders such as, early childhood and teenage experiences, genetics even the environment you grew up in, and all play a role. People are born with different types of temperaments, and some aspects of their personality are inherited. According to mental health, the signs of personality disorder are very common. You may develop a personality disorder if the family structure was chaotic or unstable. Having lived with a parent who was an alcoholic or struggled to manage a mental problem, Maybe there was little or no support from your caregiver, which can make experiencing a traumatic event or situation rather difficult. Or possibly there was a lack of support financially, as an individual or with peer pressure during school ages. Once you have had a difficult childhood or experience such as these, you are more than likely to develop certain beliefs and opinions about people and relationships in general. From experience myself without support often you aren't taught how to cope with traumatic events or situations. Strategies for coping in harsh environments are a must-have, but usually, the caregiver has been traumatized and just doesn't want to talk about it. However, the environment you grow up in and the quality of care you receive can affect the way your personality develops. The mind will remain immature until further education or true knowledge is inserted. And then generally you may be diagnosed with a personality disorder. If your feelings are the result of immoral behavior that causes other problems in your daily life. For instance, you may feel abandoned and are unable to trust others causing self and others unhappiness or if your feelings cause significant problems across different aspects of your life. In a sense that, you may struggle to make or keep friends, so you can't distinguish how to control your behavior and feelings, and all too often you tend to be confrontational. And often, those problems continue for a long time. Even though many of those difficult patterns started when you were a child or teenager, they can escalate into your adult life. Because the experiences can alter the mind later in life, and something that seems so insignificant during childhood, later turns out to have been very significant. All of which as an adult can lead to the loss of a parent through estrangement, reoccurring accidents, or incidents, self-neglect, and even, physical, sexual, or verbal, abuse. And generally, not everyone who experiences a traumatic event or situation will develop these problems. Someone who is taught to overcome will change the way they think rapidly. But someone who is taught to hide in fear and not talk about the traumatic experience will more than likely develop two or more personality disorders. There is stigma and controversy because many psychiatrists disagree about the way personality disorders ought to be understood. Some psychiatrists say the categories won't evaluate other types. The categories are based on how people behave while in a hospital, and not in their environment. Another reason some personality disorder symptoms can be similar to other health problems, depending on the person's mood and what is going on in their life. All too often there are mistakes in the diagnosis, a person suffering from a personality disorder may be labeled or insulted by the diagnosis, and may experience stigma. Therefore, the person may find the diagnosis unhelpful. Depersonalization disorder, DPD, also known as derealization disorder whereas the person feels periods of detachment or disconnect from one's body, surroundings, and thoughts. DPD is one of a group of conditions called a dissociative disorder, and the primary symptom is a distorted perception of the body. Observing oneself can feel like being a robot in a dream or fog, and having an out-of-body experience but realizing that things aren't as they appear while feeling as if your physical movements or speech are out of one's control, and feeling as though time is passing you by, and you aren't in the notion of the present. Some people often fear that they are going crazy while feeling depressed or panicky. People who are diagnosed with DPD tend to experience an urgency to question and think critically about the nature of reality and its existence. 
These experiences strike the core of a person's identity and consciousness, which causes a person to feel anxious or uneasy. When DPD anxiety levels are high, the perceptions can intensify. Episodes of DPD may last a few minutes or even years. The inner turmoil created by this disorder can result in certain brain diseases, depression, personality, phobia, or seizure disorders even low self-esteem, self-harm, substance abuse, etc. Also, it can cause physical symptoms such as chest pain, blurry vision, nausea, visual snow, and sensations of needles and pins in one's arms or legs. Since these hallucinatory states are distortions or illusions, they are not the true hallucinatory phenomena psychotic breaks from reality. DPD is thought to be caused by triggered correlations of accidents, bad drug experiences, natural disasters, severe traumatic lifetime events including childhood abuse, torture, or war. However, the exact cause is unknown, and it is unclear whether genetics plays a role. There are many hormonal and neurochemical changes in people with DPD, and it is associated with a cognitive disruption in early attentional and perceptual processes. A diagnosis is made when the dissociation persistently interferes with the social and slash or occupational functions of daily life. Description of symptoms can be inaccurate due to the subject nature of DPD and person's ambiguous use of language when describing the episodes. While DPD was once considered rare, it does occur in about 2.4% of the general population. Due to an external locus of control and threat hypersensitivity, people who live in highly individualistic cultures may be more vulnerable to DPD. Factors that diminish symptoms are diet, exercise stimulation, personal interactions, and relaxation. Alcohol and fatigue were listed by some people as having worsened their symptoms. Studies have found that patients with DPD could be distinguished from patients with clinical depression and post-traumatic stress disorder. Men and women are equally diagnosed with DPD, but onset is typical during teenage to early adult ages. DPD was first used by Henry Frederick Amiel in 1880 and first used in 1898 by Ludovic Dugas. DPD causes pathological changes to the body resulting in sensory impairment was an early theory of Maurice Chris Haber. His hypothesis was challenged by others believing that patient complaint was taken too literally and not leaving error with description metaphoric. However, the psychodynamic formed the dissociation as a defense mechanism, the basis for conceptualization. Now it is a defense against a variety of conflicts, negative feelings, and experiences. Sigmund Freud experienced derealization while visiting Acropolis, it was difficult and overwhelming for him as a reality. The Freudian theory is a basis for the description of DPD as a dissociative reaction, that was placed in the category of psychoneurotic disorders. Some argue depersonalization and derealization may be both impairments to one's ability to perceive reality. While below are the 10 personality disorders, a person would not be diagnosed with a personality disorder if they only have one or two of those characteristics. Personality disorders and descriptions. Suspicious E. Impulsive anxious. Antisocial borderline avoidant. Paranoid histrionic dependent. Schizoid narcissistic obsessive C. Schizotypal. Suspicious. Antisocial or dissocial, the person usually has had a diagnosis of conduct disorder before reaching age 15, and now has a criminal record. Generally, they put themselves in dangerous situations without acknowledging the consequence of actions for self or others. And often behave aggressively, dangerously, illegally, or unpleasantly while getting in fights. Often bore very easy, act upon impulse, and find it difficult to hold down a job. Tend to believe whatever means necessary is the way to survive and live a successful life, and only the strong survive. Commonly do things to get what one wants, putting self needs before others. And basically, feel no sense of guilt after having been mistreated by others. Paranoid, the person does not confide in people, family, or friends. Generally, find it difficult to trust people for believing they will continuously use them, and basically, they expect them to take advantage. Often they closely watch others looking for red flags of betrayal or hostility. And commonly read dangers and threats in everyday situations. Schizoid, the person generally is uninterested in forming close relationships with other people, including family. And tend to feel relationships cause problems, and will interfere with personal freedom. They would rather be alone to work out their thoughts. Schizotypal, the person may appear anxious, hostile, and tense towards others who do not share the same beliefs. Their expressions and thoughts are odd and unusual according to the choice of word phrases. Others find the behavior to be erratic and odd because the person may be experiencing paranoia in certain situations. The person may even believe they have special powers to read minds. And so, they may commonly find making friends exceedingly difficult. Psychosis is, the inability to distinguish imaginary from reality, and is found in mental illnesses such as paranoia or schizophrenia. With either illness, the person may experience symptoms of delusions and hallucinations. Emotional impulsive. Borderline, often the person has a weak sense of who they are, and that changes depending on who they are with. They experience rapid highs and lows of intense emotions such as anger, confidence, dreadful even cheerful, 
but neither emotion the person can control. They may check out and can't remember things properly, just after things happen. When very stressed the person feels paranoid and has psychotic episodes where they hear and see things others don't. They may find it difficult to make or keep stable relationships. The person often feels worried about people abandoning them, and so they do anything to avoid that happening again. And they may act on impulse doing things that can harm themselves, such as binge eating, driving dangerously, or using drugs. The behavior is consistent with having suicidal thoughts, and usually, the person feels empty and lonely. Histrionic, the person tends to feel uncomfortable if they aren't the center of attention. They often feel dependent upon the approval of others and are easily influenced. And often feel more at ease as the life or soul of the party, and often feel they have to entertain. The person behaves provocatively and flirty to ensure that they remain the center of attention. They more than likely have a reputation for being dramatic and over-emotional. Narcissistic, the person often feels fragile self-esteem, so they rely upon others' recognition for their own needs and self-worth. The person believes there are special reasons that make you different, and more deserving. They tend to put their demands above others' needs, and so they are seen as selfish because they often take advantage. They tend to be upset easily if others don't give them what they want but resent others for their success. Anxious. Avoidant, the person is reluctant to try new activities for fear of embarrassing themselves. They constantly worry about being found out, rejected, ridiculed, or shamed. They avoid social or work activities when it means you must be with others. The person avoids friendships, intimacy, and relationships. Usually, they expect criticism and disapproval and are very sensitive to either. Often they feel lonely, isolated, and inferior. Dependent, the person appears very passive and submissive, and often feels afraid of being left to fend for themselves. Generally, they have lower confidence and see others as being much more capable than them. The person often feels needy or weak, and unable to make proper decisions or function with help or support. They usually agree to things they dislike or feel are wrong to avoid being alone or losing someone's support. And so, they allow others to assume responsibility for many areas of their lives. Obsessive-compulsive, anarchistic, the person prefers to live life without interference from others, and usually is emotionally cold-hearted. Because they get little or no pleasure from life, therefore the person has little interest in intimacy or sex. Often the person sets unrealistic high standards for self and others, and they tend to think they are the best person to just make things happen. They tend to worry when they or others make mistakes and expect a catastrophe if things aren't perfect but are reluctant to spend money on themselves or others. And so, they hang on to items with no significant value but takes advantage of others' generosity. They pretend things are under control by being orderly. And generally, OCPD is separate from OCD. Sure, those words and phrases of the mental disorders descriptions could have been switched around, to show a non-mental person forming strength and support in relationships. This is how our culture's thought process can be degrading at times, for a person who is considered to be mentally ill. According to a US 2002 survey, 14.8% or 30.8 million adults met the criteria for having a personality disorder. With obsessive-compulsive, paranoid, antisocial and schizoid being more common. However borderline, narcissistic, and schizotypal were excluded from the study. This means more people could have met a personality disorder criterion. PD. Obsessive-compulsive 7.9%. Paranoid 4.4%. Antisocial 3.6%. Schizoid 3.1%. Avoidant 2.4%. Histrionic 1.8%. Dependent 0.5%. According to a US 2007 study, 9.1% of people met the diagnostic criteria for a personality disorder. Cluster A, odd or eccentric behavior. Schizoid 4.9%. Schizotypal 3.3%. Paranoid 2.3%. Cluster B dramatic, emotional, or erratic behavior. Borderline 5.9%. Antisocial 1%. Narcissistic 1%. Cluster C, anxious or fearful behavior. Avoidant 4.6%. Obsessive-compulsive 2.4%. Dependent 0.6%. According to a 2007 study, of the UK population, there was an estimated 9.1% or 2 out of 10 people that met the DSM-4 criteria for a personality disorder. With avoidant, schizoid, schizotypal and obsessive-compulsive being more common. PD males-females. Avoidant 5.2% 47% 53% Schizoid 4.9% 49% 51% 3.3% unstated unstated. Obsessive. Compulsive 2.4% 69% 31% According to a US 2013 statistic, 1.6% of the population had borderline disorder with 75% of the people having been diagnosed being women. 
Take time to make your well-being a priority, find unique ways to help self-cope rather than self-harm, it can change the way you feel towards yourself and others. Talk to family and friends, sharing difficult thoughts with them will make the interaction seem easier. Let them see you are working mentally and physically to change your circumstances. Try to set both clear boundaries and expectations with them. If they have hurt you in the past, avoid judging them because forgiveness is necessary. Most importantly, avoid interrupting them while they are talking, this is so they will acknowledge avoiding interrupting you. Exercise patience and avoid talking while angry, if you get angry, just simply wait until you are calm to talk. Remember you want to feel safe around them, and so help them see how they can prevent triggers from reoccurring in the future. Remind them of their positive aspects, and don't be resentful towards them. Work on forming fruitful relationships, be loving and kind by talking with humble admiration, to achieve long-lasting results from reconciling relationships. Also, there are crisis hotlines that will help, check the crisis services page for more information in your local phone book. Or reach out for support through peers on significant social networks. Other methods for coping, eating healthy, getting plenty of exercise, relaxation, and sleep. All this will help manage thoughts and calm the unbalanced energy. Keep an energy mood diary to identify events or situations that trigger a change in your mood for the future. And stay open to learning more about any health problems you face, to not remain in the same circumstance. Below are major diseases and disorders that affect many athletes and the military dramatically after brain injuries or molestation. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy disease, CTE, is a degenerative condition that is caused by repeated head injuries. Neurons are basic building blocks of the brain, they are known as neuron or nerve cells. Over 90 billion neurons connect in a complex network, allowing you to interpret and react to the environment. Every neuron has three main parts, the axon, axon terminal, and cell body. In general, we will focus on the axon, the axon is a long and skinny structure that behaves like a wire in an electrical circuit. Neurons communicate with one another by sending electrical signals down their axons and off to adjacent cells. To help distribute chemicals and materials throughout the cell, neurons have a special transportation system, made up of tiny tubes called microtubules. These tubes run the length of a cell, helping materials from one end make it to the other. Since these tubes are tiny, they need help supporting their structure. A special protein called tau helps keep everything together by sticking to the tubes outside. Tau supports the microtubules, microtubules help the cells function, and the brain operates normally. Once microtubules break down, tau proteins float freely inside the nerve cells. Under certain conditions, the freely floating tau proteins change shape, in a process called phosphorylation, causing them to clump together. The clumps spread to surrounding brain areas, and then the clumps continue to grow and spread without additional head impact through a process called prion spread. In a diseased brain, the same protein that helped kept everything together eventually causes nerve cells to fall apart. Scientists say, the tau in CTE spreads in a distinctive pattern, that is unique to CTE. They believe the slow spread of tau clusters is the reason signs and symptoms do not show until decades after the trauma. Causing behaviors, difficulties with thinking, emotions, physical problems, especially aggressiveness, anger, depression, irritability, suicidal behavior, and eventual progression to dementia. However, CTE is only diagnosed after death. Scientists are developing a way to diagnose CTE in a living person. Positron emission tomography, PET scans, is injecting a tracing chemical that binds to the tau proteins in CTE, and then using a special brain scanner to trace where the chemical settles in the brain. The technique is only designed for tau, and one day it supposes to telltale distributions of tau tangles in people who are alive. Post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, is a mental condition that's triggered by a terrifying or reoccurring event whether experienced or witnessed. This includes having seen or gone through a car accident, kidnapping, serious injury, sexual violation, warfare, or other threats on a person's life. The condition was originally known as combat neurosis or shell shock. The term post-traumatic stress disorder was first used in the 1970s, and officially recognized in 1980. It is normal to have upset feelings, be on edge or have trouble sleeping after this type of stress. Symptoms may include severe anxiety or depression, related dreams, or flashbacks as well as disturbing and uncontrollable thoughts about the event. Generally, PSTD can be triggered in a moment by image, memory, or smell. You may have more PSTD symptoms when under stress, or when you are reminded of the traumatic event. Thinking about the many things, you went through, while feeling despair, hopeless or shame. Maybe you tried to prevent the event from happening, but the person or persons involved was only concerned with their advantage rather than your disadvantage or disappointment. Symptoms can also arouse while thinking about the many ways that a traumatic event, could have been prevented. People who go through traumatic events have brief difficulty adjusting and coping, the symptoms can worsen interfering with day-to-day -day functioning. Causing significant problems in daily social situations or work tasks and relationships. 
These mental or physical distressing cues can make you want to avoid related situations altogether, and reoccurring hypersensitivity can increase the fight or flight response. And at first, it may be challenging to do daily activities such as spend time with family and friends, school, or work. PTSD symptoms are generally grouped into four types, intrusive memories, negative changes in mood and thinking, changes in emotional and physical reactions, and then avoidance. PTSD symptoms can start within one month of a traumatic event and sometimes may not appear until years after the event. Most people start feeling better after a few weeks or months. However, symptoms can last for months and even years. Symptoms vary over time from person to person. Avoidance, trying to avoid talking or thinking about the traumatic event. Avoiding activities, places, or people that remind you of the traumatic event. Intrusive memories, reoccurring and unwanted distressing memories of the event. Reliving the traumatic event as if it was happening again, flashbacks. Upsetting emotional distress or physical reaction to something that reminds you of the traumatic event. Negative changes, hopelessness about the future, thoughts about yourself, or other people around the world. Memory problems, including not remembering important aspects of the traumatic event. Difficulty maintaining close relationships. Feeling detached from family and friends. Lack of interest in activities you once enjoyed. Difficulty experiencing positive emotions. Feeling emotionally numb. Changes, being easily frightened or startled, always being a guard for danger. Self-destructive behavior, such as drinking too much or driving too fast. Trouble concentrating and sleeping. Irritability, angry outbursts, or aggressive behavior. Overwhelming guilt or shame. For children, age 6 and younger signs and symptoms may also include reenacting the traumatic event. Younger children are less likely to show distress and instead may express it through play. For this reason, their frightening dreams may or may not include aspects of the traumatic event. Symptoms of PSTD through rape is higher. If the rapist can find or restrain the person. If the person being raped believed the rapist would kill him or her. If the person who was raped was very old or young. If the rapist was someone he or she knew. If people around the survivor ignore, or are ignorant of, the rape or blame the rape survivor. PSTD causes are childhood trauma, chronic adversity and familial stressors all can increase the risk. As well as experiencing adulthood or childhood bullying. People who have experienced interpersonal trauma such as child abuse or rape are more likely to develop PTSD, compared to others who have experienced non-assault trauma such as accidents and natural disasters. Interpersonal trauma is not well understood, some psychiatrist believes it may be a marker for childhood attachment problems. Mothers and babies who experience domestic violence during pregnancy are too at higher risk for developing PSTD. Emergency childbirth is also associated with PTSD. Women who experience several miscarriages are at higher risk of PTSD than those who experience one miscarriage. Women who have had breast cancer or mastectomy may experience PSTD. A person with PTSD is at a higher risk for intentional self-harm or suicide. The medical conditions associated with an increased risk are cancer, heart attack, and stroke. People with PSTD have the highest rates of healthcare service use in the U.S. Occupations that are at higher risk include ambulance personnel, divers, and train drivers, firefighters, healthcare professionals, journalists, police officers, military combat personnel, and sailors, in addition to people who work at banks, post offices, or stores. Others at risk are concentration camp survivors, victims of natural disasters, and violent crime. In the U.S. about 89% of adults have experienced at least one traumatic event in their lives. About 3.5% of adults have PSTD in a given year, and an average of 4.7% of men and 11.3% of women develop PSTD once in their lives. About 67% of people recover from PSTD after completing treatment. Combat-related PSTD recovery rates are lower than recovery rates for physical or sexual assault-related PSTD. Of military service, People who are exposed to combat about 78% do not develop PSTD, compared to the 25% that do. Although the unexpected death of a loved one is the most common traumatic event type reported in cross-national studies, the majority of people who experience sudden death will not go on to develop PSTD. This type of trauma only accounts for 20% of PSTD cases worldwide. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy Cognitive relates to cognition, concerning the act or process of learning cognitive development and functioning to change perceptions. Changing the mental judgment, memories, and reasoning, that contrast with emotions and volitional processes. CBT is a form of therapy used for treating depression and PSTD, in which the goal is to diminish symptoms by correcting distorted thinking that is based on negative expectations and self-perceptions. The diagram depicts how a person's behavior, emotions, and thoughts influence one another. A triangle is used, to sum up, all humans' core beliefs that have three categories, future, others, and self, and this represents CBT's tenet. 
CBT has been proven to be an effective treatment for depression and PTSD, and it is currently considered the standard of care for PTSD by the U.S. Department of Defense. With CBT people learn how to identify the thoughts that make them feel afraid or upset and then replace them with less distressing thoughts. In general, the overall goal is to be able to understand how certain thoughts about events cause PSTD-related stress. Therapies believe that CBT may produce significant results compared to some of the better valid therapies. If symptoms last for more than a month reach out to family or friends or contact a minister, a spiritual leader. Also, you can make an appointment with your doctor or a mental health professional, to ask them about cognitive behavior therapy. If you are experiencing suicidal thoughts call 911 or the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. You will reach a trained counselor.